Welcome to a Legendarium special about the New York City Police Riot of 1857. In this episode, we will learn about a time when the New York City Police fought against other New York City Police. New York City in the 1850s was home to one million people, by far the largest city in the country. One New Yorker, shipping merchant Fernando Wood, turned to politics after making a fortune by shipping goods to California during the gold rush. His career began with his election to Congress in 1840, and seven years later he became mayor of New York City. As mayor, Wood faced accusations of graft, electioneering, demagoguery, and bribery, most of which were true. Despite this, Wood built a solid base among New York City's poor immigrants, especially the Irish who felt that the mayor protected them from an anti-immigrant elite. Mayor Wood refused to enforce anti-alcohol laws against saloons, which made him a hero among the city's underclasses. To keep power, Wood misused New York's police to make sure that he and his fellow Democrats always won. Many policemen themselves took part in the graft and bribery common of the era. However, the new Republican Party, after winning control of the New York state government, hoped to break the Democratic Party's control over the city. In April 1857, the state legislature disbanded New York's municipal police and replaced them with a state-controlled metropolitan police. It would serve in Manhattan, the then-independent city of Brooklyn, Staten Island, and Westchester County. Mayor Wood claimed that the new police force broke the principle of home rule and sued. The case became bogged down in the courts, and in the meantime, Wood's municipals and the state's metropolitans operated in the same city at the same time. In roll calls, at station houses throughout New York, 15 police captains declared themselves loyal to Wood, along with 800 of the 1,100 rank-and-file police officers. Each side dismissed those disloyal police and filled vacancies with their own men. The two forces often competed, sometimes freeing criminals arrested by their rivals, other times attacking each other in the streets. The trouble came to a head on the morning of June 16th when Daniel Conover went to City Hall to assume the office of Street Commissioner. Governor John King of New York, an enemy of Wood and one of the chief Republicans responsible for the new police law, gave him this post. The mayor insisted that the governor had no power to do so and named his own man for the office, Charles Devlin. This job gave the holder, and whoever appointed him, many chances to grift and graft. Indeed, Devlin obtained the job by paying the mayor a large bribe. Wood ordered his municipals to beat up Conover when he showed his face in City Hall, and then threw him out. A furious Conover obtained warrants for the arrest of Mayor Wood and gave it to the Metropolitans. The Metropolitan captain went to City Hall and entered Wood's private office. The mayor, clutching his staff of office, refused to recognize the captain as an officer of the law. Wood had filled City Hall with his municipals, who threw the captain out of his office and into the hallway. Word of the confrontation spread fast. A mob of Wood supporters arrived at City Hall Park. Diarist George Templeton Strong called them a miscellaneous assortment of suckers, soaplocks, Irishmen, and plug uglies officiating in a guerrilla capacity. Gawkers stood on roofs from the surrounding buildings, eagerly awaiting the anticipated explosion of violence. Mayor Wood reinforced City Hall with several hundred municipals and locked up the building tight. At 3.30 p.m., 50 Metropolitans under Coroner Frederick W. Perry and Captain Jacob Sebring entered the park. The Metropolitans appeared in full uniform with frock coats and newly minted badges. A ribbon-labeled Metropolitan Police decorated their plug hats. They brandished foot-long batons, ready to use them in battle. The mob heckled the Metropolitans while cheering for Fernando Wood. Some broke off branches to use as weapons, made brickbats, or gathered stones. 
A few climbed into the park's trees for a better view. Shoving the crowd aside, Sabring led his men towards the rear entrance of City Hall. As they pushed up the 20 steps to the entryway stoop, they faced 30 municipals guarding the entrance. As the two sides began shoving and arguing, a second force of municipals brandishing clubs charged from a side door. The Metropolitans did not stand a chance. Sabring retreated to City Hall Park Field, formed up his men, and charged the front doors. Coroner Perry almost made it inside before being roughly pushed off the stoop. Again, the municipals, in far superior numbers, attacked. Wounded men rolled down the stairs and blood dripped down the railings of City Hall. The Metropolitans fled the municipals and the mob. At least 53 men suffered injury during the brawl. Wood won the battle, but would not win the war. Later that day, the 7th Regiment of the National Guard marched down Broadway to the harbor, where they would sail to Boston to celebrate the anniversary of the Battle of Bunker Hill. The Metropolitans asked them to intervene, and they did, pointing cannons at City Hall while lining up bayonets at the ready. This show of force persuaded Mayor Wood to surrender. He spent only one hour in jail before being released on bail. Mayor Wood and Governor King called a truce until the courts could settle the matter. In time, the courts abolished the municipal police, but not before the city's thieves had a field day. They looted freely, and matters came to a head on July 4th when the dead rabbits fought the Bowery Boys in a massive brawl in northern Manhattan. George Templeton Strong opined that the case only decided which horde had the legal right to be supported by the public plunder. In 1858, the voters denied Wood a third term. However, he returned to the office for a two-year term in 1860. A Southern sympathizer, he wanted New York to secede from the Union to preserve its Southern cotton trade. Wood later went back to Congress, where he served as one of the most vocal supporters of the Confederacy and strident opponents of the 13th Amendment, which abolished slavery in the United States. That wraps things up for this episode of The Legendarium. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, press like. If you want to see more, press subscribe. And if you've got anything to say, let me know in the comments section. Thanks again for joining me, and I hope that you have a great rest of the day.